the thing that I like most about living on a farm is just the freedom to go anywhere and do stuff on your own. I would like to own my own farm someday. The work that I do on the farm is everyday chores, feeding calves, feeding cows, uh, a lot of field work, and just everyday chores that need to be done. I have been helping on the farm for the past six or seven years. I haven't worked with horses all my life. It's been the last two or three years. Libby was a horse that um, actually, when we bought her, we were told they saved her from going to the glue factory. <laughs> um, but she's a young, a young horse and she needs some work. The day the accident happened, um, it was a Monday, and Logan was due to start football camp that afternoon. And it had been a very nice day out that day, but there was a big storm rolling in, and you could see the dark, dark blue clouds coming up. Um, and you knew, you knew it was going to be a nasty storm. And Livy was kind of being snotty and wouldn't let us put her lead rope on, so we had no way to catch her. We needed to get these horses back in. Um, and Logan and Gracie came across the field on the four-wheeler from the farm. He saw that Libby was out, and, and I said, oh, what are we gonna do? We gotta get her back in. And as we were going into the, the pen, she turned around and kicked him on his left side. I didn't see Libby's kick coming. I just heard a loud crack. He flew about eight feet. Oh, I, I just didn't know. I thought for sure. He had to have a punctured lung or you know broken ribs for sure. So he stood up right away, but he grabbed his side and said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I didn't feel any pain. I could just feel blood running inside of me. His color was, was bad and, and I immediately ran over to him. I didn't think I was gonna die, I was pretty scared. And I helped ease him back down into the field. His eyes were fixed and staring. He wasn't breathing, and I couldn't find a pulse. For all intents and purposes, he was gone out in the field. And um, I turned to my daughter, Gracie, and told her she needed to run to the house and get Mom the telephone. And I held, held Logan in my arms, and I told him, I said, you can't. Don't leave me. Don't leave me now. And I was just praying that, you know, God, not today. Don't take him. Don't take him from me. With that, I, I did some rescue breathing with Logan and I did a few chest compressions and Gracie came out with my phone and um, I called my mom. The only thing I said was, I need you now. And then I called 911. When they loaded him in the ambulance, um, my little girls just the gut-wrenching cries because they thought their brother was dying. I was scared for my brother. So we got to the ER and the initial scan said that his spleen was shattered and we needed to get in there because he was, he was bleeding a lot. I had called home to let them know that we would probably be going into surgery. Right after she hung up the phone, my mom looked out the window and the storm had passed and there was a big double rainbow that looked like it was right over our house. So she, she took a picture, she said, and she called me back and she said, it's going to be okay. She said, there's a double rainbow over your house. We're on our way and it's going to be okay. For me, what stands out for our stay at Children's Hospital of Fox Valley was the wonderful, wonderful care. I've been involved in health care for well over 20 years. Never have I seen the level of care at any place is what was given to us at Children's of Fox Valley. The care that they gave Logan was phenomenal. They would come in, when the nursing staff came in, they'd close the door. There was not another patient on the unit as far as we knew. I, it, it was just all about him. And they sat down, pulled a chair up, sat down, and just really took the time with him to explain everything. And do you have any questions? They just, they truly cared. I stayed there with him from the beginning till the end. Um, every morning, 
somebody came in and made my made my bed up. They would, you know, they'd pull it out at night and, and make sure I had enough pillows and blankets and then in the morning they'd put it all back. I felt very I thought, you don't need to do this. I'm not the patient and it's okay, you know. And no, she said, we're taking care of you too. Much as they did for the, the patient that was there, it was just very, very professional and caring.